Hi and welcome Sagittarius, Rose Burnett here from Mind, Body, Soul Balance and this is your mid-month tarot reading for August 2018. Just remember it is a general reading, take from it what you will, leave what does not resonate. If you want a personal reading with me, attune to your own energy and circumstances, the questions that you'd like to ask, uh, anything that is of concern for you or that you want answers to with the uh, tarot, the oracle as well as in connection with divine source and spirit. I'll pop the uh, link on how to book a reading with me on this video and in the description box below. I'll also let you know I'm just at the moment putting together a deep karmic healing program. And uh, it's for those people that want to uh, leave the past behind. If you're stuck in certain energies, you want to clear your chakras, uh, you want to transform your life. Uh, there's all sorts of things that are going to uh, be in it, but uh, it is for deep healing mostly. And... Uh, if you want to find out more about that, you can uh, pre-register at the moment, which uh, obligates you in no way whatsoever. It just lets you know, uh, I'll just send you an email and let you know when it's ready and uh, you can check it out. So I'll pop that link on this video and in the description box below. And let's get started with your reading. So we are going to firstly start off with love and romance because we didn't cover that in the monthly one. And uh, we're also going to have a look at your general energies plus a crowning energy from the Isis deck, which is... Uh, is the goddess of healing from ancient Egypt as well as the star Sirius, the star masters in our universe in terms of global collective divine consciousness. So pretty exciting. All right, so let's open your reading up with your heart and soul energy with the heart and soul deck by Tony Carmine Salerno. And uh, let's see what you need to know, Sagittarius, for the next couple of weeks. Okay, this one so wants to come out for you. I'll have a look at this. It's so beautiful. It's two boughs of a tree. And if you see that, there's actually two uh, love hearts carved out of them. And they're uh, kind of bending towards each other. And what it says, Sagittarius, is every relationship goes through changes, but this does not mean that the love has gone. Let it be a time of reflection. Some adjustments may be needed. Perhaps a new purpose may need to be discovered. It may feel cold and lonely but beneath the surface, the earth is warming to the promise of spring. In the meantime, express how you feel gently, lovingly, and honestly. Let yourselves be vulnerable and hold each other tight. Mm. Beautiful. Okay, let's have a look at love and romance with the uh, romance angel deck and let's see what you need to know, Sagittarius. Okay, this one wants to come out for you straight away. Oh, wow. Okay. So you pull the chemistry card and basically it means there's a strong magnetic attraction. Uh, so this might be uh, somebody that you've just met. It might also be in your current love relationship. That's a committed partnership, which is uh, beautiful. I mean, it's always fabulous to have chemistry, isn't it? Mm. You've got the message to retreat from the world. So this has a couple of meanings. If you're single and you're uh, by yourself, um, it basically means to take some time out for self, free yourself from the situation in terms of chasing love and just do some one-on-one -on -one connection with self. Connect with your body, your mind, your soul, your spirit. Uh, Gaia, Mother Earth, um, Feel your divinity and appreciate how amazing you are. Yeah, because when you do that, you put those vibes out into the universe. You naturally draw that soulmate partnership and connection to you. For couples, it means taking time out for uh, your love life, basically. If you've been uh, on the go a lot and you've been putting everything else in front of your uh, your love relationship, it's about taking some time out just for that one-on-one -on -one time with your partner and uh, reconnecting, enjoying each other's company. I'm going to say... Uh, and don't neglect your intimate part of your relationship either. Open up to each other and be passionate because you've got the chemistry there. And if you're not feeling that, then you need to be questioning yourself and being really honest with yourself about uh, your love relationship. And uh, you get back to you what you put out too in terms of uh, what effort you're making in a relationship. All right. There's three that want to come up for you together, which is really interesting. Mm. It's right next to that, which is double confirmation, really. It's saying enjoy the time of um, holiday time together, the bliss of holiday time together. So it is time to reconnect. There's a strong message coming through, even if it's just for a weekend away. Mm. And for some of you, there's a bit of healing family issues to do. And um, 
you know, this can come up quite a bit because uh, often each one of us goes through, unless you had a very strong and stable upbringing with your caregivers, um, it can be very karmic in terms of what gets passed down from you ancestrally from their parents to your parents, from your parents to you in terms of how love relationships should look like. You can only model and, and, and I guess reflect what you've learnt. And uh, it does say that your love life benefits from forgiving your parents, but this is really about, heart, about um, healing karmic issues that have come up for you. And uh, often they can be subconscious and unconscious. You might not even be aware that it's tripping you up in love relationships and you've got to dig really deep to uncover what they are. And uh, often it's about in times of uh, distress in relationships or uncomfortableness or insecurity, it's about looking at the shadow side of self because you can often project out to the other person uh, stuff that's really not theirs to carry. It's actually coming from you. Um, so it's about being really honest about that, but digging deep and, and asking yourself, well, what's coming up for me in this moment? And once you realize what's coming up for you in that moment, it's then about doing a little bit of what we call timeline regression and uh, going back into your past and going, when did I first feel this emotion and why is it coming up for me? And that's the karmic stuff that you'll unravel. Yeah, will totally transform your love relationships when you figure that out, that stuff out. Mm. I have to say, this is coming through for quite a few signs. It's about make the effort in the next couple of weeks. I don't know what's going on with people's love relationships. If you put them on the back burner, it's time to push them to the front. And uh, it says great love is uh, worth the effort and uh, take the steps that you're guided to take. So it's not a one-way street. You've both got to make the effort. So yeah, yeah. Some clear messages coming through, Sagittarius. All right, let's have a look at your general energies. And first up, we're going to be uh, looking at uh, the goddess guidance in terms of uh, what comes up for you, Sag. All right, what is it that Sagittarius needs to know? Thank you. Mm. Oh, you've got retreat. You've got quiet time, Sage. Take some time out to meditate, contemplate. Um, yeah, this is really just time for self, reconnection with self. It'll also help you uh, appreciate your own divinity. Absolutely. I do it all the time. Hey, if you're not following me, follow me on Instagram. I'll put my Instagram handle on here because I share a lot of my uh, mind, body, soul balance. If you don't know, I also have got uh, diet, fitness programs and uh, very much a, an advocate for uh, balancing the mind, body, soul, spirit connection. And I take you on a lot of my hikes. Show you what I do for my quiet time uh, in terms of meditation, contemplation, reconnection with self. So, yeah, if you're on Instagram, follow me because I also share a lot of motivational, inspirational stuff you won't find on YouTube. Alrighty. Yeah. There's a lot around here about your energy cycles because this is under the retreat card. It's right next to the quiet time. Just be very mindful of your energy in the next couple of weeks in terms of getting an adequate rest, sleep. If you're feeling overwhelmed, tired, take the time out and recognize it. Especially emotions as well. Mm, very clear message coming through. Time for some meditation. Nematoma, sacred space. Um, you can get a lot of guided meditations on YouTube. Just type guided meditation in whatever type of meditation you want to do it to, whether it's healing or heart space or just peaceful harmonizing yeah um yeah it does say create a, a sacred space in your home and you can do this with crystals or candles whatever it is for you it can also be connecting out in nature which is uh, can connect you so much into your divine into Gaia mother earth it can be somewhere like a temple or a church that you find is a, a sacred space for you but it's really about tapping into your higher levels of vibration and higher consciousness and, and connection to the divine uh, collective consciousness that surrounds us, uh, protects us, loves us, nurtures us, even if you're not really aware of it, it's there. Mm. Okay. Under healing family issues, you've got aim, leap of faith. So for some of you, this means having a lot of courage and strength to face those family issues and possibly to have those discussions with your parents about your childhood and how it's impacted your relationships. It's not going to apply to everybody. It can also mean 
taking a leap of faith in terms of putting healthy boundaries in place with people. So um, particularly in love relationships, friendships, but also with family to protect yourself emotionally, physically, mentally and spiritually. Um, yeah, because you deserve a joyful, happy life. Can also mean take a leap of faith on love. Put yourself out there. And uh, you've got kunyin, compassion. Just treat everyone with love and compassion. Be gentle in your approach and your communication with people because you don't know what they're going through. It is sitting under make the effort. So if your partner's not been responding to you lately, uh, lead with love and compassion and gentleness to find out what's below, what's underneath that. Because you might be unaware of what they're going through. Mm, but mostly love yourself. Always love yourself first. Okay. Let's have a look at some uh, specific guidance with the Energy Oracle. I see what you need to know, Sagittarius. That's two that want to come out for you. Oh, wow. Okay. This actually came out for Scorpio as well. Envy. It's sitting under the quiet time siege. So envy is often the shadow side that comes out. We can be envious of... Um, let me bring it closer and show it to you. So... She's actually holding a uh, in one hand a bowl full of pearls and in the other a single pearl, which which to a, to kind of pertains to a state of lack, feeling lack in your life in some area, whether it's love, whether it's finances. You know, envy can be uh, envious of somebody's uh, opportunities that they've got, can be envious of people's uh, wealth and abundance, their material, the things that they've materially got, like their home, their car, their, you know, whatever it is for you. Um, can be envious of great love relationships. But right, what's missing in this picture is when you look through the arch is how the golden light is on the other side of that. And there is so much potential in terms of what's around you that's working so well in your own life, but just not seeing it. And uh, it's important when this stuff comes up is to recognize it and not get stuck in a place of envy and then to just practice the art of gratitude and appreciation for what's working well in your life. And uh, I'll share this story with you because each time this envy cards come up, in fact, I think the, the gratitude and appreciation one came up too. So I shared this story with Capricorn as well as Scorpio. And yesterday I was, uh, I, uh, you don't mind me chatting with you, do you? No, you're good. I was uh, coming back from the gym, driving back from the gym, and I had a momentary, moment. I say momentary because it doesn't happen very often. I had this momentary negative thought about wealth and abundance and I was driving down the street back to my home. And literally just as I had that thought, I passed this young man, he probably would have been early 20s, very early 20s, and he was such he was in such a state of poverty. Um, he was actually he was actually putting newsletters out in terms of, you know, like a mail drop or whatever. Um, but you could just tell physically every part of him was in poverty um, and not in a great space. And it got me at such a heart level. I mean, I did all my Reiki protection symbols for him and sent that love to him. Um, but it just brought me up and went, you know what, pulled me up and I, it just went, what on earth you, have you got going on in your mindset? Because there's so much good happening in your life right now. Be grateful and appreciative and look at the people around you that are really suffering. And you've got to remember that, that often you can take for granted what's really good in your life, including your relationships and including the, the, uh, the house that you're sitting in, the car you're driving, um, your children. There's so much good in the world. So just be appreciative. Don't get stuck in envy. Okay. I have to honestly say this next card's coming out for a few signs. Um, heads up. There is some deceit going on in relationships and specifically for that it's coming through for, it's come through for about three or four signs. So this is third party. Um, it can also be deceit around money in terms of not being truthful, your partner not being truthful about their financial situation. But it's also the cheating's coming out. So just be wary. Trust your intuition. If something doesn't feel right, it doesn't feel right. Don't discount it. Um, just be wary of it. It's not going to apply to everybody, but I'm saying there's a warning for the next two weeks. That something, if it is, if it is happening, it's going to be revealed to you or ask for it to be revealed. You can talk to the spirit and divine and say, okay. Uh, I can't see it, but I can feel it. So you need to show me the truth. Put it out there to your angels. It'll be revealed to you if it's there. 
always protect your heart space. Okay. Mm. And for those of you taking some time out and going retreating with your love partner, um, angel of love, it's going to open you up to love. It's so beautiful. But it's also a message that if you're not coupled up or even if you are and you're going through a tough time, there's a lot of messages here for taking that quiet time for self. This is sitting under the sacred space. You're going to feel that self-love, that beautiful self-love um, if you do that. Connect to your divinity, connect to your body, your spirit. Mm. Yeah. You've just pulled first chakra, Archangel Michael. So there may have been some concerns at the moment around your basic needs, financial, um, your home life. Basically, the basic, the, the root chakra, which is the first chakra, is all about your, your, your security in terms of shelter, food, water, um, connection to others, basic human connection to others, uh, your health, your well-being. Um, if things have been rough, just know that this is a confirmation things are going to start smoothing out. And uh, it's sitting under leap of faith. So I'm going to say to you, just have faith and trust that everything's going to smooth out. Mm. Oh, wow, you've also got the second chakra. Second chakra, Archangel Ariel. This is all about your emotions and your sexuality. Um, I'm going to say it's about releasing. When you do the releasing of the healing family issues, the karmic stuff, you're going to be so much more balanced because this is where we hold, apart from our heart chakra, this is where we hold all our negative emotions if we're holding on to them, like fear and doubt and all sorts of things, guilt, shame. It's all there. Pain. Pain's basically in your heart chakra, but it can be hold on to a lot of emotional stuff, old baggage is in here. It's about clearing that stuff up and letting it go. God, you lighten your load when you let it go, I've got to say. Um, and for those of you that are stuck in that place, I think you'll find uh, when I when I bring it out, the Deep Karmic Healing Program is going to be totally awesome for you. Okay. I'm going to pull you some very gentle energy now from the Nature's Whispers deck. And let's see what comes out for you, Sagittarius. Oh, wow, did you see that fly out? Got to be an important message. Mm, yeah. The reason it flew out is because she's on a swing, by the way. Show it to you. So have a look at this. It's a child or an angel that's uh, on a beautiful swing and just enjoying the moment and so beautiful. And it says maintain your childlike spirit. This is connecting to your inner child, doing the things that light you up. It's about raising your vibration. Absolutely. All right, what else do you need to know, Sagittarius? Okay. Oh, I was going to say there's two, but there's three that want to come out for you. Oh, wow. Okay. So you've got to uh, look at the big picture. Going through any challenges at the moment, it's about detaching emotionally and standing in your rational masculine side brain and figuring out what's going on in your life. Look at it from a different perspective without the emotion in it. And truly, truly listen to your heart space. Mm. And uh, we got, I was just going to see if we had the heart to heart conversations card. No, we don't. Um, you've pulled open your heart. This is open your heart to love. I'm going to say it's also um, know that it's safe for you to love. Absolutely. Absolutely. Drop the walls. Drop the walls. Always put healthy boundaries in place to protect yourself, but know that it's safe for your love. Mm. Not only you've got maintain your childlike spirit, you've got be spontaneous. Okay, Sagittarius, you need to get out of your own way and have some fun. That's gorgeous. Have a look at that. So gorgeous. Okay. I'm going to pull you the crowning energy now from Isis. And uh, I've been working with this deck for a couple of weeks. It's a new deck. I'm super excited about it because it's so powerful. Uh, if you missed it, I did a deep karmic healing tarot reading last week. It's in the playlist uh, for every star sign, so you can find it there. And it specifically uses the Isis deck. Ah, okay. So you've pulled Divine Destiny, Path of the Divine Warrior. And uh, 
they have a ritual in here, which is often a meditative ritual. And I'll say to you, uh, if I didn't say it at the beginning, is to, uh, which I might have, can't remember. Forgive me if I have. Make sure that you uh, listen to it here, but then do it again at home because it's, it's so powerful. Do it properly. Um, sometimes it asks you to go outside and watch the sunset and things or the sunrise. Show it to you one more time before we start. Have a look at that. And what it says, Sagittarius, is the divine warrior guides you to your divine destiny. The divine warrior energy exists within men and women as the inner propulsion to continue with a worthy path, even during times of difficulty. When faced with a challenge, a true warrior will summon more of him or herself to the cause. It might be more wisdom, focus, intelligence and surrender into the divine. The warrior within has great inner resourcefulness and determination. This part of you will lead you to spiritual success. The oracle of divine destiny is a call to your divine warrior. This part of you has great self-esteem and believes that what you desire is worth whatever effort, personal growth, application, focus and attention are required to obtain it, provided it aligns with your divine destiny. This part of you acts in personal integrity, and if the goal will compromise integrity, then the goal is refined until it shines like a diamond in your heart. Then the divine warrior will bring it into being. The path of the divine warrior is not one of any means to an end. The means and end are considered equally important. The divine warrior will succeed in bringing about your divine destiny but it will be done in a way that is in integrity with deep spiritual values. There are important teachings on the path of the feminine about the need for surrender and allowing for best manifestation. And the divine warrior is not at odds with these, but continually surrenders into the greater unfoldment and play of cosmic forces, seeking to align with those forces for greater power and flow. The oracle of divine destiny often comes at a time when there is something that you feel that you're struggling to attain. It might be a vague sense or a clear vision. There is something within your heart that you have almost given up hope on, wondering if it is ever really going to come together. And this oracle comes with the message that although you may feel a struggle or challenge, it is not a sign to step away in this situation it is a sign for you to put faith in the divine warrior within you instead. This warrior may shift approach, change expectation, go within to find the resources you require or find a completely different path to get you to your destiny. Do not give up the fight. And if you're not sure as to what this applies to, ask yourself what is it in your life that you feel you are fighting to attain or maintain? Find what is not in form, but in essence. If it is your job that you are fighting for, then it may be your freedom and responsibility that you are really fighting for. If you are fighting your weight or eating habits, then it might be the right to express your true feelings that you are fighting for with your body as the divine warrior, refusing to give up the right to truthful expression. Find the truth of what you are working for and towards and keeping your heart and mind centred in that truth. Your divine warrior will get you what you need and deeply desire in alignment with your best and highest divine destiny. You deserve no less. Wow, so beautiful. All right, here's the ritual for divine destiny, which is uh, the meditation. And it says, close your eyes and go into your heart. Be aware of a stillness within and imagine that you can read your inner heart as if it were a beautiful book of words, images and scenes. Imagine, sense or feel that this book within your heart is accessible to you now and as you ask silently within, imagine, sense or feel that this book within your heart is accessible to you now and as you ask silently within, where am I fighting for my divine destiny right now? And be aware that the book responds to you, falling open 
to a particular page. Imagine that you can perceive or feel the contents of that page, letting yourself be aware of any impressions, whether they make sense to you or not. If you do not sense anything, that is fine. It doesn't mean nothing is happening. It just means that you are not consciously aware of it for now. Be patient and intend to receive guidance, which will become clear to you during this ritual or later on, whatever serves you best. Then ask the book, how do I best fight so that my divine destiny will manifest? And be aware that the book opens at a particular page. And as you see, sense or feel, perceive or notice certain colors, feelings or impressions. You may see images or get clear guidance, or you may find that you don't notice much consciously at all. Even if the latter is the case for you, do the exercise anyway because you will be receiving guidance at a subconscious level and will have a healing and guiding effect on your thoughts, actions and impulses. This is a deep healing exercise no matter how vivid your perception of your inner book might be. Take your time in coming back to your heart and when you are ready, open your eyes. If you had any insights, you may wish to record them immediately before your awareness leaves this altered state. And to finish off your reading, Sagittarius, is an incantation which says, This incantation helps you merge with your inner warrior and find the strength you need to fight your good fight with your highest divine destiny. You can say this standing up, feet strong on the ground, belly in and firm and arms wide enjoy your strength and it says warrior strong within my heart you beat my highest destiny i shall meet your power focus and determination ends fear doubt and procrastination warrior strong within my heart you beat together my highest destiny we great wow it was very powerful. I hope it helped. All right, Sagittarius, if you enjoyed this reading, please like, share, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And uh, if you've already subscribed, you're rocking awesome. Love you to bits. I do read all the comments. I do respond. Uh, it might take me a little while at the moment because I've been really busy and you guys are giving me so many amazing comments. I'm still getting around to answering them all. Um, I will just say, please don't be negative on my channel. I just don't do it at all. It's not my vibration. Uh, if you're feeling negative, that's take responsibility because that's how you're showing up in the world and uh, take your booty outside and go bounce and ground yourself and then come back if you so desire. Uh, yeah, uh, my channel's really all about raising the positive vibration on this planet one person at a time and that includes you. All right, don't forget if you want a personal reading with me, links on this video and in the description box below. Everything else we chatted about is down below as well in the uh, info section. And for now, much love, much light. Namaste.